share with you is uh, when we have a, a patient like this, what we share with her, we listen to her first, we analyze together what we can do. We don't run with a syringe and we don't inject and then we, um, we expect what, the, what they like. So what is important is to look together at the face, I look at the mirror, we discuss, and then I have a 3D camera and we discuss to try to find a consensus. And main issue is, for everyone, is the budget. So what uh, Erika, she's 40, 46, okay, she's 46. According to you, what is the main problem on her? If I turn her face, also you look at the front view, you look at oblique and profile. So think about what she would need first. What about you, Erika? What you would like to do? Everything. <laughs> but you have one choice. Yes, just one syringe. One choice around the eyes. Okay, so I agree. So then this is her main choice. And second? Um, here, just lifting Sorry. this. Just a little bit like that. And then you mentioned the tail of the eyebrow oh, and this, yeah, which yes. is very rare. Very rare patient mentioned the temple or, or eyebrows. So she had some botulinum toxin on the brow uh, two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. eh? So it's good, but because they relax a little bit too much the brow, she had this sagging eyebrows and an excess of skin. So for me as a surgeon, so I'm a facial plexus surgeon for about 35 years, I work now in Geneva, I was in Cannes, I moved to Geneva, I was too shiny, in, uh, too sunshine, too sunny in, in Cannes. So what I, I recommend to her would be to do uh, eyelid surgery and probably a lower eyelid surgery. And for this, the best, honestly, would be to do a facelift. So we are not here to do surgery, but to mention that Madame Erika, the best would be to do this surgery. So if we want to compromise, we can compromise on this, what we call a tear trough, deformity, we can use a product that will blow a little bit this area and I use a mirror, I show the patient if I use one syringe here or have a syringe, can you look at the camera there? Yeah. If I inject here, we'll get this kind of result. Not to blow, but a little bit better. And because I do this, I need also an injection a little bit here, not to lift because you don't lift with product, with filler, what you do you expand a bit the, pro the, the fat tissue, the muscle, and the skin, and then you have the illusion that you create a kind of lift. So one syringe of, here we'll use XL, and XL of XXL, because I'm gonna inject deep on the bone and, uh, and the fat, and here the same. And the second step, if it's not enough, and this is the indirect treatment of the tear trough, I'd like to inject a little bit on the tear trough, but be careful because you have this. You see the, can you zoom, uh, Tony? Yes. This is the dark spots and this you're not gonna correct with the filler. And if we use too much filler, she can have a swelling under the eyes. So S will be the appropriate product if XL is not enough. So that's for the mid-face region uh, under the eyes. Around the eyes, then we can also use a product on the temple, and I will use L. Uh, I inject a little bit more deeper than Benjamin. I like to inject in the muscle, close to the bone, and this injection blow again the muscle and the aponeurotic tissue, and expand a little bit this area and lift the tail of the eyebrows. So uh, there, we're gonna use a bit of L, so that's going to be my first injection will be here. It's X XL. Second injection here, XL or XXL, depend on how much you want to project the lateral side of the malar area or the zygomaticus. Then here, L. Yeah. And the tail of the eyebrow, I will use M because I don't want to have a product who project too much. I will be on top of the bone, but I don't want to have too much projection. I don't want something too viscous or too elastic. Okay, so one syringe, a second syringe, and half a syringe here. And then I calculate in my mind, and then I tell the patient how much it costs. So that is the three first zone I like to inject. Um, another point we didn't mention, okay, we can do a little bit on this zone, but most important is, if you look at her on the profile, 
and you want to make her more attractive, sorry, Erica, and more feminine, you see she had a bump here, so we can hide that bump with some filler on the nose there and there, lift a little bit the tip of the nose to open this nasal label angle and to feminize the chin by making something more pointy. She has very square skin, masculine, so there the adequate product is XXL. This is a fantastic product, very viscous and very elastic and we're going to inject medially to make a more pointy chin. And be careful not to over project, otherwise you end up this way. But you have this kind of retrogenia, you see, and by pulling this forward, you treat a little bit of this problem on the neck. Okay? And remember, more you inject here and here, more you make the face rectangular. What I want is something more triangular, which is more adequate triangular to a female face. Okay? So then we're going to use some L on the nose right there. So I calculate already the product. So this is the project with the patient.